Shane, Peter, we finally made it to the back office, in our office, <laughs> for our very first podcast. I'm excited. I am as well. I'm going to call it Motor Home Insiders, what do you think? That's a great name. I like it. First thing, now you're a busy man and you are married to that phone, not Vic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. First thing I want you to do, phone up. Phone up who? Turn it off. Oh, okay. We want your undivided attention for 30 minutes. That's all. 30 minutes? 30 minutes, hello, yeah. Oh. <laughs> so, as you know, I, I wanted to do this podcast for a very long time. I've, I've talked about it for a, probably since I joined the business, yeah. to be fair, <laughs> yeah. uh, a couple of years ago. So, wanted to do the podcast for a really long time. And I think it's important that we do that because as a business, we see every make, model, every conceivable conversion that's out there. Yeah. And you in particular talk to over 200 different dealers through the course of a month. Some of them a lot, some of them not so much. Yeah. But you've always got your finger on the pulse on what's going on. And you kind of have a big face in the industry. <laughs> you are kind of a big face as well. <laughs> <laughs> yes. That's what I have to put up with. Especially with the fluffy beard. Yeah. <laughs> I'm overdue. <laughs> You're kind of a big face in the industry. And a lot of that we do ourselves. We put ourselves out there with the YouTube and you, know, you do a lot of uh, press work and a lot of commentary uh, outside of what, yeah. uh, what our business is. But you're only a young lad. You're only mid thirties now. 33. 33. A little boy in the industry. Whippersnapper. You're a whippersnapper. Most people at my age haven't even bought a camper van. Yeah. Well, this is it. And, and that's why... Or have they? Well, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and that's why I wanted to sort of get people to know Shane a little bit, like we do in the office, oh. and understand why you're a trusted voice in the industry, especially to the dealership networks that you talk to. And really drill down why people listen to what you do and why you say it and generally what you say it does happen in the industry as well uh, yeah so what well, talk to me about your past how did you get started okay so it started my dad neil malpass uh he's been in the industry do we have to salute since the uh, yeah <laughs> since the early 80s I thought you were turning that off. I have. It's on flight mode. <laughs> it's on flight mode. It's not that <laughs> anyway, so we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. So we had Neil Malpass. He's he worked at a big dealership from the early '80s. So he's been in it for a long time. Long, long time. I was born in '88, uh, which makes me 33 as of today. And from when I was about four or five years old, my dad used to take me to work on a Saturday mornings. You've got a great photo, haven't you? Yeah, which I'm going to put this photo up just as we're going through this, <laughs> so you can see exactly what we're talking about. But that photo is, I think, in the mid '90s. Uh, for the models that are around, this is when that company used to import the Italians over the roller teams and so on. Yeah, yeah. Um, and as you can see, that was on the Transit and the old Fiat. All they started up McLuhy, didn't they? McLuhy roller team. They're all left and drive back then. Which yeah. Is why they were so cheap, and I don't know if you saw that price. And I can remember them being a bit cheaper at like eighteen thousand pound, brand new. Yeah. Compared to a new one, which are very much in excess of fifty thousand pound now for the cheapest yeah. model. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is scary when you think about that. Um, yeah, I used to go into work with him, and then that photo that was taken there, that was at Earl's Court. Uh, I used to go to there and do things like hand out brochures, even do bed demonstrations if there was something a little bit new, like there was drop down beds and this, that, and the other that were being introduced uh, late 90s, early 2000s. And that used to be my weekend. I did. And then, probably, then even like the age of 12 years old, I was washing van, uh, motor homes down. Well, yeah, you've like you have 13 to 16. grown up in the industry, haven't you? You, you yeah. know nothing other, really. No. It's always been your job. Yeah. Since you're a wee boy. I know food. Does that count? You do know food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do a good barbecue, to be fair to you. Um, so that's what, 20 plus years 
of you being in the industry, more so with Neil. Yeah, and, close yeah, to 30 years, yeah. Yeah, Neil is the, the dad of the business. He, he keeps threatening to retire, but he's like a crap boy band. He keeps coming back every <laughs> now does, and yeah. then, doesn't he? But uh, between the two of you, you are almost the oracles of the motorhome industry. You know, every, you've seen it, you've been there, you've done it. But this time it feels different. Yeah, I mean, just going back to why we, I guess we do know so much, because we do get offered a hell of a lot of motorhomes now, yeah. per day, you know, in the peak, it's 70, 80. A day, yeah. Per day, so. Buying 60 to 70 a month. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not like cars, where, you know, you type in a reg and glasses guy comes up and this, that and the other. It's just not like that. Motorhomes, because they're all so unique, they've got their own extras, they've got their own specs. You can even get the same make and model but there's two or three different variations yeah, of yeah. layouts and land yeah. layouts. So every single one needs researching. Um, it's mind blowing really, if you're just starting out into, yeah. your motor, not as a buyer like yeah. we are, but just to buy your own. The, the, the amount of people we speak to that have bought one, yeah. and within months are going, it, it isn't right for me. I need, I need a different yeah. layout. Yeah, a great example of one that we just had, lovely Old Trail Comanche. Well, it was beautiful, wasn't it? The, yeah. Old Trail Comanche. You can, get, you can get an Old Trail Comanche with three different lounge layouts. Then you can get one with a high bed, a low bed, and then an over cab bed. So before you know it, one make and model has got one, two, three, well, some multiple variations. And he spent, what, over 100 grand on that, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, just over 110 grand for this with the EMP yeah. self-leveling. So. Shows nice how much it has changed, yeah. <laughs> yeah. For what was and you've mid, seen? What only was mid seventies, probably only five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Mad, isn't it? Really. Mm. I mean, between you and Neil, you've seen it all that's gone on in the industry. Neil, yep. especially, saw the boom back in the sort of sixties, seventies, eighties. Uh, he's still got the same haircuts from back then. Uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> Then it sort of drifted away, but it feels like the, the motorhome industry and the camper van industry has, has really taken off again. And yes, COVID is a massive part of that, but we're dealing with more from the 60, 70 age group. That's shifted down to the yeah. sort of 40s, 50s, even mid to late 30 age group uh, are in there. And that's why I wanted to start up this podcast, because I think, A, people listen to podcasts when they're moving around. Yeah. And B, the amount of motorhomes you, in particular, research, because every one of those leads you look at personally, individually, mm. don't you? Every single yep. one. Even when you're on holiday, much to Vic's delight. <laughs> you're still there looking at every single one of them. And I suppose I wanted to the podcast to sort of talk the story of the, I mean, we were hoping to do it, month, well, we are going to do it monthly, it might be bi-weekly uh, as, as the show sort of progresses, yeah. um, and just talk about what we're seeing and what trends we're seeing and what sort of conversations we're seeing. That's how I wanted it to go, and I wanted it to launch in January. However, hmm. this weekend, Swift Group have thrown a bomb. Yeah, and it's uh, the best way to put this news is it's summarised what's happened with the industry in the last, well, since COVID started, really. Yeah, yeah. The changes have just been incredible. Um, what's happened? So in case anyone hasn't heard the news, Yeah. what's happened? Uh, Swift Group have pulled out of the NEC Camping Caravan and Motorhome Show, if that's the way, right way, right way round for February. Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's major. Swift, uh, what? Voluntary was... pulled out. Yeah. Yeah. Because Swift are what? The second biggest manufacturer in the world? Behind? I'm pretty certain the... It's a very difficult one because there's a few that are part of big groups like Erwin Heimer is a true. Yeah, is, is a British manufacturer. I'm pretty certain they're the biggest. And they've gone. Eh, eh, and they've just turned around and said, "Lord, we just looked at it. We've they probably will have paid some sort of deposit for the show, but they've sat there and assessed it and thought we don't need to put any more money into this because it's just not viable." Now, that's interesting, really, because the statement that they made said that their marketing campaign almost outstrips yeah. the outlay to do the motorhome show. Now, 
traditionalists like to go to the motorhome shows mm -hmm. and like to go around and, and strike a deal. Yeah. Why do you think they've done it now? Why do you think now's the time? There's, there's a few reasons. I mean, for whoever's been watching us, there isn't, um, or just seen the general news and dealers and stuff like that, there's nothing for sale for next year, for 2022. Yeah. So that's your first big issue. So you go to a show, you've got your range of, and bearing in mind Swift do motorhomes, caravans and holiday uh, lodges, or statics, whatever you want to call them. There's n there's about 90 odd models in their range, so that's some space. But well, they've also started doing camper vans as well now. They've started doing camper van, which you'll know a bit more than me. <laughs> the Monza. It's not that little terrible caravan that you used to go around with your dad. No. <laughs> well, that was before me. I'm sure that was no more than the 80s. There was a si oh, that was earlier than that. The Monza was. Oh yeah, before that. I'm just talking yeah. about the last time we saw them. Oh God, yeah. Was in the 80s, yeah, I yeah. think. I can't really remember much of them. I think they only lasted five years and they had a one-year warranty. And then they just sort of fell over. Yeah. Yeah. We digress. Yeah. Swift Group. Motor and Caravan Show. Yeah. <laughs> so, so they launched the, car the camper van. Yep. Which is on the Ford and it's, was it about £58,000? Uh, starting from 58000 It's on the, uh, yes, yeah, Ford Transit Custom, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So there's the reason why we're going back into this in a bit. Um, but yeah, Swift pulling out of the NEC is massive for the reason, one, because they're the biggest one. They must have been doing the shows for, well, certainly decades. I'm just trying to, I think they've been around for 50 something years. So they've probably been doing it for a good 30 years, if not 40. Yeah, and uh, it was always quite a traditional thing for people to do, wasn't it? That go to the show and strike the, the deal, strike the bargain there. And it feels like Swift just don't need to do that. No. So, the, so the, a lot of the, what they did last year in marketing has accelerated massively in, within the motor home and caravan industry is they did something called Swift Live, which is where they basically yeah, sh yeah, they yeah. showcased their own caravans and motor homes. Whilst it wasn't the best example out there, and while you can't touch and feel the motor home, it was, uh, it was a step into the future a little bit. Well, yeah, I mean, there's going to be... Through COVID. Yeah. Yeah. And the motorhome industry is booting. It's almost become cool again, hasn't it, through COVID? Um, people happy to, like I said, the age group's dropped. Yeah. People are happy to go out and, and, and live in a field because they can't go out and live in a hotel for a, for a week or 10 days. Yeah. Uh, I find it quite a fascinating industry to, to have come into. And to, to, yeah, the, as you know, my background's camper vans, and that's where I've always loved and, and where, what I've always sort of been yeah. and to see these big old motorhomes coming out so into the wild camp arena yeah you would never have thought it years ago no you'd never have thought it i mean pete's a very good example of what the younger generation of camper vans and motorhomes are very kind really. of you to call me young but thank you <laughs> <laughs> very kind so so pete's got a you got a transit camper van got a full transit custom made conversion by made by woodstock campers woodstock campers and you've got Twins. Got twin, two year old twins, yeah. Well, two and a half year old twins, and, yeah. and you got Lucy, to be seven year you old. You got Lucy, who's six. Six and three quarters, she'll tell six you. Six and three quarters. Very six proudly. <laughs> so, so, Pete, Amy, and the three kids. So, when they go away, even if it's for a trip up to the Peak District, something like that, they go in the camper van because one, you've got the seats, two, you've got your fridge for your drinks and snacks, you've got your porta potty for the toilet for the twins when they want to poo, or Pete does. Um, you've got. Apparently, I'm not allowed to poo in it. <laughs> yeah, that's what the porta potty's for. It's portable, <laughs> and so on. You've got everything on site. So if you're out for a long day, you've got everything that you need. You don't need anything else, do you? No, you, you can cook. And that's you regardless can... of where you're staying. Absolutely, staying we've away, got a rollout awning. So just for a day trip, it, it's absolutely perfect for us. So if the weather opens up on us. We're all in compass, we're all mm. safe and secure. Yeah. Uh, there's obviously there's been restrictions with contacts and things like that. And I think it's been very important for me that there is a sense of community within uh, for the kids more than anything yeah. else. And the camping and motorhome community does bring that, but you can bring that whilst having those socially distanced mm. restrictions there because obviously we went through a spell where they couldn't see the best friends even though they live two streets down yeah. the road it is it's been bonkers and phenomenal yeah and i'm going to bring you back to it because you keep trying to take the conversation to me but i'm <laughs> going to bring you back to it that swift group announcement does that spell the end for camping and yeah so I, I, I sat there talking with the 
Jason, the motorhome man yeah, at like Reynolds, yeah, on, uh, yeah, yeah. on Saturday went to meet up with him just to watch his daughter play football. Um, it Did they win? Yes, I think 5-0 it was. There we go. Good team. Good team, Newcastle, under 16. Very good, actually. Stoke, Newcastle, not... Stoke, Newcastle, yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, very good, actually. I was very impressed. But we stood there talking about it, and I think it got announced on the Friday that they were not doing the show anymore. And you stand there and start talking about it, you think, oh, my... That's huge. huge. Yeah. So, to, I mean, to, and then I, uh, before we go into what me and Jason spoke about, I spoke to my dad after, and to put it into scale, they had a, I don't know, let's say they put a £200,000 deposit down on the show. It's probably going to cost them, as a rough guess, estimate, whatever, a couple of million pounds to go and do that show. If not more, you think, taking, booking the stand, yeah. doing the personnel to get everything there. Planning, yeah. Planning, prep. Having the motorhomes, have they even got the motorhomes to put on the stands? Yeah. Who knows? No, Who knows? You've, you've we know seen, they're sold. Yeah, you've seen, you've seen them transporting holiday lodges and stuff like that on the yeah, back yeah. of a lorry. You see, you see, it's it's not, big money just to get It's not just chucking on the back Birmingham. of the trailer and getting it there. No. And then you've got 90 odd in the range. So you've got to get all the tiles, the lighting rigs, the flowers, the tables, the chairs, the staff. All the, all the advertising cheap. boards and this, that and the other. It's big. It's huge. So they pulled out. Yeah. Beginning of the end? I think so, yeah. Because I can't see why... Big it's statement, a, it's, a bit, it's a bit like a break-up. It's up. a big statement. The way I put it, it's a bit like a break-up. Once you've made that initial decision to break up and you've told that person, that's the hard work done. Yeah. That's the hard work done. I don't know why you'd go back now. I really can't see why you'd go back. Do they no need to? to it. With technology advancing how it is, and we talk about sort of the tech of to come quite a lot yeah. in the office, um, do they need to go back? I don't think so. I just think there's, it's because it, co the motor home industry is ridiculously old fashioned and this has just pushed a few companies like that to go into the future a little bit and I mean, Swift Live was advertising a different, in different ways. Of water, wasn't it? Yeah. And they can only develop on that. They can only get better at that. I mean, let's say, let's say Swift Live, let's say it cost them 100, 200,000 pounds compared to going to a show at two million. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. But how does the consumer see what they want then? Because that was always the drawer of the show. You could see everything in, in, in one yeah. roof. You, That's what I loved about it. Yeah. Because as much as you can see it online, it's nice to actually go to a show and appreciate what something is. Yeah, yeah. We're touchy-feely people, so it's nice to be... <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's nice to be sort of having a look around and really getting to grips with yeah. what would be right for you as a consumer, for us as yeah. just sort of industry knowledge. Do you think anyone else will pull out? Yeah, I, 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 see, I think it could have opened the floodgates, really. I think there's someone like, uh, bearing in mind, Swift's probably the biggest British manufacturer up there. Yeah. I think someone like Eldis could quite easily go, I can't see why. Wow. But, you know, they've, they've sold out for 2022. A lot of these manufacturers have sold out for 2022. What are you actually going to the show for? And I think I said with, uh, with Jason and Mark from the Caravan Place of the Week, you're almost, if you are a salesperson there, you, you might as well get a whiteboard, that tall, write all the models you've got left, and just cross them out as somebody comes up to you and says, I'll have that one. It's because a lot cheaper than two million, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Even at the show, if you've got to go to the show. Yeah. You know, the, the, dealers, the dealers don't want to go to the shows because the dealers have got to pay around £1,500 to send per salesman to the show. And then they've got to discount the van because that's the premise of a show. Yeah. When at the moment, they don't need to discount no. the van. In fact, the van prices are going up on the new builds. Yeah, they're, they're going up every, every, every day. Uh, that Comanche, what was that, that Comanche that we had the other day? Yeah. That was a classic example, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, that, that one in particular was with the spec it had on, which including the self-level in, fa in fairness. Yeah, which yeah, is yeah. probably six grand's worth, £111,000 which not too long ago would have been in the 70s, maybe low 80s. Only in the last five years we're talking, we're not talking too long ago. So it's almost a question of where is it going to go next? Yeah, I mean, Swift, Swift Escapes, for example, they've gone up from mid-50s to late-60s. Huge. 
Big, big jump. And there's still more announcements to be made on the price increases as well. I think there's going to be a big couple of months yet, just before the show. I think yeah. there's going to be... It, it feels like the tide is turning and almost... You're right, Swift are trying to embrace new technology. They almost tried it with the live of a bit of virtual reality with yeah. the Swift Live. Um, we all know that Zuckerberg is... Yeah trying to go into the argumented reality, sort of mm. hologrammatic ways of just working in general, never mind yeah. selling. Yeah. Um, I could see little hologram people wandering around little hologram motomes. Yeah. So if, if you get the chance, just, just type in uh, Mark Zuckerberg on YouTube, and it's about 11 minutes long. It only came out a few days ago, and he basically is talking about this is what his plans are in five years, and he's not messing around when he puts. He this tends sort of money to, in. yeah, do yeah. it when he puts this. So sort of we're talking about in. normal looking glasses. You put your glasses on. You're sat in your living room. You've got your table or whatever. You can design the room to look whatever it wants to be. Obviously, there's a lot of people working from home now, so part of his vision is, like I said, you've got your laptop and everything in front of you. Pete's working from home, so he's sat next to you on his, but he's got his glasses on as well. He's not actually sat next to you, but you can see him as if he is. So why can't you not put these glasses on and have a proper walk around the motorhomes and move things around? And that could be absolutely game-changing for the industry, I think. Because, yeah, you're right, you can have a wander around the motorhomes and, and, and sort of decide, yeah, this is the right layout for me, I think I've got enough headroom in this. You could do all of that. How cool would it be you then flick a switch and you're in the factory and you're watching your motorhome being built, yeah whichever factory it is and you're almost watching that i've recently purchased a new build house and it's really cool just watching it being built from mm. literally a plot of land so you could see this fiat decato yeah. base rolling in will it still be a fiat decato base that's a, probably another podcast <laughs> that is but the, the, see the fiat decato base rolling in and then watching your motorhome being built do you think it could even come into the fact of you design your motorhome from from that point? Well, again, this is something Jason said. There's an argument to say that, honestly, we're talking a fair amount in the future. If you are if you are buying your, uh, your reality room or house or yeah, whatever yeah. it is, you might be buying a motorhome. Yeah. Virtual motorhome. Yeah. And going away in that for it. I don't know. It's, That's crazy. But the human interaction isn't there. But it is because you just because you just press Pete come into the conversation. You go onto Facebook Messenger, invite Pete, and he's there. And who doesn't want me there? <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, you can say no. You can block. <laughs> That's bonkers. So, end of shows then. I think so. In the next two to three years, or. Do you think the summer one will happen? I don't know why you go back, unless you're really struggling. Because the way the shows used to work, if, if you were a dealer or a manufacturer never used to work, go to the show, everybody used to turn around and say, well, oh, they must be in financial trouble. Yeah, they yeah, can't yeah. afford to go to the show, because yeah. that's how expensive they were. But now it's the other way around, whereas for me, if you're going to the show, what's gone wrong that you've got to go to the show? Why do you have to push it? Yeah, what, what are you pushing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The only, the only ones I feel sorry for are the smaller converters. But surely they're starting to set up their own independent shows, almost around the festival scene. Yeah, but you've got to get in front of the people in the first place, and the NEC was yeah. a very good place to get the yeah, likes true. of... Don't get me wrong, these, these companies are, are growing massively with the likes of Wild Axe and Wheel, um, Wheelhouse Leisure. Well, House Leisure, well, House sorry. Leisure, yeah. You know, these, these slightly smaller companies, they probably they did need the show. Yeah, no because doubt. they're very good at what they do, aren't they? Every Wellhouse and Wild Axe we've bought, yeah, they've been quality. To yeah, be fair, yeah, on a very good, very, very, very good manufacturers. But we're in a new era now where the internet is there, and you can put whatever you want in front of anybody. Yeah, yeah. So the argument is, you know, if Wellhouse just put the get the meat marketing right, then they don't need the shows. Is there an argument that salespeople go? Yeah, well, you probably turn into an Apple store then where you've got product geniuses where you can, well, they'll talk through the different specs and packs yeah, and stuff yeah. like that and say, this is what you want and just press the button and order. Yeah. Interesting times. Because they really shouldn't be doing much of a discount. It should be. Nothing really needs discounting, does it? Now, no. 
we're probably going to lead into the next podcast on this, but and we're going to talk more about it in the next podcast. You don't even... I love this. <laughs> you're so uncomfortable because you don't know what I'm going to ask you on these podcasts. And I think that's why it's going to be very enjoyable no, I, for I, me. I quite, I quite like it. I quite like being challenged. The only thing that's... Uh, completely honestly, I just don't... I, I, I'm getting more comfortable about talking about myself, but I don't, I'm a bit shy on that sort of I know. I was front. at your wedding day. And you, you shied away. I thought it was all right. I can't really remember. You had a few Jaeger bombs in you, though, to be fair. Um, <laughs> what do you think the next three months is going to bring in the industry? Uh, next three months is going to bring a lot of panic for the dealers. I still, it still blows my mind that they still don't understand what's happening. Because they're still Talk getting... Talk to me more. They're, they're still getting... One, they're out, they're, the manufacturers are still in the process of telling them that they're not getting the stock that they thought they were getting. Wow. Um... Some haven't had that news yet, and some are just... So what sort of cuts are happening there? Um, one example of a dealer, uh, he had 60, I think, Eldis last year. On order? I think it was Eldis. Yes, Eldis, on order. No, he had 60 for 2021 models. Okay, yeah. And he could have done with a lot more, obviously, because of the demand. Couldn't everyone last year, yeah. Two sets of cuts, I think the first one was down to about 33. So that's nearly half, which is huge. And then he thought, well, that's bad. He got another 11 cut after that. So he's down from 60 to 22. Wow. That's just one example of a dealer. Two thirds cut. Roll team, we spoke to a roll team dealer today. He's only a small dealer that does a bit of rental. He's been cut from 20 down to 11. Wow. Burst in the dealers, 50% cut. Um, is it all down to this chip, do you think? The, 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 it's a bit of everything. Whether the, you're building a house or whatever, the price of wood and everything's going up. You can't get this, that, and this, that, and the other. Uh, technology, you know, if, it's just anything. Yeah. Anything that just goes tits up, it... It, it will. It, it will, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Any, anything that, you know, only takes, only takes a week for, you know, when they, they had the power sh shortages in the Far East. When that happened, they, for a few weeks, they got cut down to half weeks. Well, yeah. That's probably backlog some things by a year, two, three years. That's where most of it gets built, isn't it? Yeah. The, of the even if it's just little the, bits the, and bobs that yeah, click in. Yeah, very, very basics. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously the Germans went into lockdown, so any German builds yeah. are going to be put back again. I mean, you know, at the time of this, obviously we're only on, currently on Plan B. We've just gone into Plan B. What's Plan C going to bring in January? Is that, is that going to shut down? I mean, not talking about necessarily this country, but other countries. Yeah, because yeah. we're not that bad in terms of restrictions, but some of the Germanies and places like that, they you are... You look at Austria, you can't go out the front door without yeah. being double vaccinated. It's Yeah, so how's that going to affect the industry next year? I mean, some of these dealers, they, they need to... Wake up. Wake up a little bit. I keep so do you... <laughs> I, <know you> do. <laughs> I hear your conversations. Do you think a big boy's going to go next year? We've... We've always had, we've already had Loudons that have cut down to one branch from two, who are the, one of the biggest in the country. Um, I just can't see how they can maintain it. I, yeah. I, I mean, I haven't looked at the, I haven't had a look at some of the big groups, whether it's Marquis or whatever. But last time I looked at Marquis, thirteen branches and thirty something used motorhomes in in stock. And, you it's know, not a lot, is it? No, because you, I, mean, you've, I think you've had the calls on the phone where you've been speaking to somebody, oh, I went into Marquis the other day, they only had one on the four calls. Yeah, yeah, sale. yeah, absolutely. It's, um, it's really fascinating times to be in the industry. Yeah. I don't know how it's all going to go. I can see some of the smaller boys coming up the ranks. Yeah. Uh, and really embracing the changes that are happening. And I can see some of the more old fashioned falling by the wayside. Yeah, this this will uh, this will pick apart the old the old fashioned dealers that sit there and think, well, well I'll only buy these motorhomes at Glasses Guy trade price. Yeah. Well there is no glasses guy trade price. Well there is one. Well, I mean less, there is one, but it, oh my god, it's bad. I mean we, we, we always used to within reason go by the glasses guide historically pre COVID and everything like that, but we got rid of it in June. Hmm. You know, there was, for example, there's something like an Eldis, 08 Eldis, which are online for 28 grand, but the guide price is 12 grand. Yeah. So it's just, you can't ever you do can't anything do with it. that. We would, we would have no business, would we, if we no. followed the glasses guide. Next month. Yeah. And I want you to have a little think about this. 
I want you to have a think about what you think the used motorhome market yeah. is going to do in 2022. I told you this in 2019. I know you did. <laughs> I know you did. You told me, but one is yeah, to tell. Yeah. I mean, we don't know if anyone's watching, listening. Yeah. At the moment, no one is because we haven't processed this. But I do think it'll be interesting to gather your thoughts, especially the conversations you in particular yeah. have over Christmas time, because you're right. There is a sense of panic. I don't see the sense of the dealership network stocking up, for want of a better word. They've got the money in the bank. And I don't fully understand why they're not stocking up now in preparation for March. Yeah. Uh, it feels like a lot of them are still doing what they've always done, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily going to get what they've always got. No. There's, like I said, there's you know, a lot of the old-fashioned dealers, but the big groups and so on, especially the ones that have done new, uh, they always relied on party exchanges and people just rocking up to the door with them. But when they're getting cut on their eldest from 60 down to 22, and the river franchises on a similar sort of basis, then there isn't, there isn't really any part exchanges this last 18 months or so. It's all new people onto the market. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's just going to continue to snowball. Yeah. And these new people into the market don't really, they, they've been bought up through We Buy in a Car, where they know there's alternative options to part X. Yeah. So they will go hunting for their alternative options and what's right for them. Yeah. It'll be interesting. I mean, I, yeah. I, I know, without um, going too much into it, but I, I did say this last year when we when we first was in the in the lockdown with Jason and Mark. As all that thought. This is going to be, you know, we're going to have massive shortages. It's going to boom and everything like that. And it's happened. And as much as people turn around and say, "Oh, when we all can fly abroad, they'll turn around and." Well, we could go abroad now. You've just come back from holiday. Yeah. You've done your PCR tests. Yeah. It didn't cost you too much more for you and Vic to go out and come back? No, it wasn't horrendous, to be fair. It was the, the lateral flow that was done in, in Tenerife was 30 odd quid, 40 odd quid, yeah. uh, 40 euro, sorry. And the PCR was a walk in one that was 60 pounds. So, having said that, it would take 100 if, quid. Yeah. I couldn't if, afford to do it. You need to pay me more. <laughs> yeah, well, that's but, what. That's yeah, we have a family of five. It, just, it wouldn't be practical. Yeah, well, bearing in mind, the laws only came in when I came back. Yes, they did, so yeah. So if they came in when I was over there, I'd have had to have further test before I went out. And I suppose that's where people are still a little sceptical. Yeah. Why the market's still going to continue to grow. I know you're twitching to turn that phone back on, so <laughs> thank you so much for the first Motor Home Insiders podcast. Yeah. That was all right, wasn't it? Yeah. That was comfortable for you. That's fine. I'm going to continue that. to dig into your life, though, so that you have to talk about yourself a little bit more. Lovely. <laughs> So yeah, any, any feedback as well, please let us know. Anything Absolutely. you want to yeah, really yeah. talk about. Because, I mean, motorhome side is that's what it's called. There's a good reason for that because, and the reason I started the show with Jason, if, you know, 18 months ago. Yeah. Where can you get any sort of insider knowledge? Independent. Or a, a different, you know, it's, it's, it's... A different point of view, an independent yeah. but trusted point of view. Yeah, nobody's really gone to the public with anything no. from the other side. It's just been, here's your motor home deal, here's the price. We, we pride ourselves on answering any question, no yeah. matter how yeah. challenging the answer may be for us. Yeah, what's, the phrase, that, what's the phrase that we use? Shane, what's the answer to that? <laughs> no, it's not that one, is it? <laughs> no, the phrase that we use is always, you know, the, if, if the customer asks, we'll answer it. Yeah. It doesn't matter what the question may yeah. be. Um, quite often it's to our detriment, really, but it builds Trust. Yeah. Trust. And it builds, uh, hopefully, repeat business. And, you know, that our business is doing yeah. quite well off the back of that premise, really. But thank you for your time. I'll let you turn your phone back on now. <laughs> Don't know why mine went off in flight mode. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know. We'll have to figure that out. But, uh, yeah, it's been really good, really useful. To summarise, end of shows. You don't think there'll be any in 2022, or do you think it'll be a slow burner? It'll be interesting to see which, what, what happens to the February one. I think there's a few people who have committed to it already. They might have put full payment and everything like that down, but it'll be heavily reduced. And then September... It was always be, the smaller show anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, it was always a smaller show. September is an introduction to the new Rangers, and February is a bit of a... You, you never tended to get your, your European manufacturers there like you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it wasn't worth the effort. 
beginning and the end? I think so. I think Thanks so. for watching. Thanks for listening. We'll speak to you next month. See you soon.